Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the difference between a glide speed and a minimum sink speed. Now one thing I want to say before I get too carried away with this is this is one of those things where just because you can does not mean you should. Now that's something I should always make this very very clear on. Um, this is one of those situations where if you're a glider pilot you're like oh we do this all the time. If you're a regular airplane pilot single engine with a little thing in the front there like we are you probably don't want to get too carried away with this. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. So what is the difference between your glide speed and a minimum sink speed? Well, your minimum sink speed is the speed which your aircraft is going to lose the least amount of altitude. Now, you're probably sitting there going, whoa, that makes, let's use that speed all the time. No. Uh, the reason you don't want to use that speed all the time is because you're going to be physically traveling over the ground slower, meaning that wonderful effort to try to hit a particular point on the runway is now going to end poorly for you. Likewise, our glide speed is going to be the best ratio of down to out. Now, the reason we're looking at this is because it makes a big difference. And let's go ahead and take a look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pause my aircraft here. This is a Brunswick Municipal Airport, by the way, for anybody who wants to come here. And I just found out there's a noticed airman that says uh, this lovely runway is actually closed now. You can see it's got the big X's on it. Fills me with a sigh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold 90 knots. Or I'm going to try to get somewhat close to 90 knots and about 1,100 feet here. Uh, that looks pretty good. And what we're going to do is we're going to cause the engine to die, and then we're going to immediately associate our glide speed. We're not going to land the plane. What we're going to do instead is we're going to see how far down the runway we get by maintaining our glide speed. But before I do that, I'm actually going to edit the weather. So uh, right now, uh, we're taking a look at the runways directly behind us. Uh, that would be about a 2-0. I think it's a 1-1-9 one and one nine are the two runways here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the wind coming out of that direction to a high speed. And you'll see what happens. So let's grab this real quickly. Uh, obviously, let's see here. We want the wind coming from the north. Uh, actually, we'll make it pretty precise here, just again, for demonstration purposes. So let's call this 0-1-0. Uh, zero, zero. And we'll say the speed is fairly high. We'll set it at uh, 20 knots. Uh, we don't need any gusts. <laughs> uh, we'll assume the gusts are also from that particular. Well, I don't know why it gave me gusts here. Zero gusts. All right, so we have a 20 knot wind coming directly out of the north. Now, this is going to be really, really important to us, and you'll see why in a second. I have to actually build my speed back up here because uh, the gust is so strong. Now, watch what happens when I attempt to land the plane or glide the plane in using the glide speed of the airplane. Again, let's pop back up to 90 knots here. This is one of the nice tricks. If you freeze your airplane, you can actually keep flying. All right, unfreeze. There we go. So there's our 90 knots again. What we're going to do is we're going to kill the engine right as we cross, hit our 65, and watch what happens. All right, everything's looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Engine's out. Boop, 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 boop. So as always, uh, we want to immediately plan for our best glide, which is going to get us to about 65 knots in this plane. And there it is right there. You can actually see the little G right there. And now we're just going to go ahead and fly the pattern normally. Again, we're not going to land, we're just going to get close. And there's 45 degrees. We'll go ahead and take this turn. Our favorite coffin corner. I actually had an interesting experience in the real plane with this coffin corner. And it's not that I stalled, but the thing went ee! about this time. Whoa, speed's getting a little slow here. Let that nose come down. Again, we want the best glide speed, 67 knots. 67's looking pretty good. Go ahead and level this off here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn towards the airport right away because I'm noticing that wind has got me. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the nose up just a little bit. And we're just going to make our way real. Oh, no. Look at that. So as you're probably observing now, uh, my glide speed is right on at 67 knots, like it tells us on the little display there. And you're also probably noticing that the plane is slowing down to almost nothing. Uh, the reason the plane is slowing down to almost nothing is because now we've got ourselves this really hefty headwind, which is uh, making it very difficult to actually continue flying our plane like this. Now, if I continue to let this thing drop, we're going to end up in the woods. As a matter of fact, everybody on the ground right now is predicting exactly which one of those trees I'm going to hit first. So we're going to go ahead and hit the power. And we're going to go around. Now, the interesting thing here is you observe... <laughs> I'm not doing that with the controls, I swear. The interesting thing you probably just observed is because we were maintaining such a slow speed that the headwind that we turned ourselves into was so massively strong, it basically prevented us from making any progress towards the ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up time a little bit here. Woo! Man, that wind is a lot stronger than I expected it to be. One, two, three. And we'll go ahead and I'll come back down. And we'll get back to our 90 knots. Now what we're going to do is use our minimum sink speed. Now this aircraft does not have a published minimum sink speed, which means we have to estimate. The way you estimate minimum sink speed is you take the wings, take half 
the wind speed and add it to your glide speed. So when we have the wind behind us, what we're going to do is we're going to use a speed of instead of 67, we're going to use 57 because remember half of 20 is 10. Now when we're traveling the other way, instead of doing 57, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing 77, which is going to be the equivalent of the wind speed or glide speed plus 10. Now what that means now is as we're gliding this way, the wind is going to help us along. When we're going the other way, we're going to fight against the wind, and basically power through it in order to basically facilitate our approach. Now the interesting thing here is what we really want to see with this technique is the fact that we get closer to the end of the runway when we actually succeed. Keep in mind in the real world uh, when we practice an inch and out approach, we never get that far away from the runway. Basically we turn immediately to the runway. But that is a video for another day and I'm pretty sure we've done that one before too. Let's go ahead and get ourselves in the same rough position here. Again we were doing 80 before, there's 1100, then pull that throttle back. Whoa, those are some fun wins. All right, same strategy pretty good check our speed real quick it's like doing a point turn here and engine out so same technique except this time i'm going to slow the plane down to 57. remember that is going to be our glide speed minus um half the wind so that's about 57. so now we're not going as fast through the air so now we're going to continue we're going to continue we're going to continue all right there's my turn so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to increase my speed to glide speed plus zero because um, unfortunately this is going to be across the wind here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull us to a glide speed plus 10. So there's my glide speed right there going out to sea a little bit. I'm going to twist this thing just a little bit. You can see just how powerful that headwind is. There we go. So now we're going to go ahead and turn to final but this time I'm going to nose the plane down to our new speed of 77. And it's 76, and a little nose down right there. Whoop, too much. 77, 78. So now, because the aircraft is uh, now has a higher airspeed, that also means our ground speed has improved slightly. So you can see, just looking on the ground there, that the tree that I smacked into last time is going to actually sail right below us. Another thing you're probably observing is my vertical speed is quite a bit faster down. Uh, this makes complete sense because of the fact that the aircraft itself is pointing down at a sharper angle. I am not doing that with the controls. That's the actual aircraft itself doing it. All right. So you can see that instead of ending up in that tree that was about 300 feet behind us, I get to end up on this nice little grassy knoll that's a little bit better than we had before. Now the interesting thing there is, because of this strategy, it enabled us to get a little bit closer to the end of the runway instead of uh, eating it in the woods. Now in the real world, the manufacturer is going to specify what technique you want to use for an engine out. For this aircraft, they specify that you're supposed to be doing the 67 knots. Now I highly recommend use the glide speed published. Uh, just because this technique enables you to get the, like again, what was it, four or 500 feet extra? Uh, that could have saved your life, but on the flip side, you know what really could have saved our lives? having turned immediately when the engine failed and just landing in the middle of the runway. Wow, this is like getting out and walking. My ground speed is so low, watch this. Look at this, look at how slow it's, I swear I'm not in slow motion right now. This is just how strong the wind is. Oh my gosh, I can get out and walk this plane. <laughs> that was excellent. <laughs> All right, so hopefully this video is helpful. Again, this is the difference between minimum sync and glide speed. Enjoy.